Hey, my name is Megan. Um, I wanted to share my birth story today of my second son because we had a crazy birth and I just want any mom out there that goes through a similar experience to know that you're not alone and that it does get better, but I wish that I had a video out there of someone that went through the same type of birth that I did. Um, on November 13th, I went into labor. I was walking around Costco and I thought that I was feeling extra sore and maybe it would start that day, but I was 39 weeks and three days. And with my first, I went um, to 41 weeks and got induced. So I had never gone into labor naturally. So we're doing our shopping, we get everything, we get home and we're waiting for my grandma to come to town so that someone's here in case I go into labor. She's from a few hours away in Wenatchee. So we were starting to prep food. I started making soup, breakfast burritos, all that. And I, my grandma had just arrived and I got my first contraction and I was like, there's no way this is real. I've never even felt a contraction before. And so there was probably seven contractions that were making me feel like hot flashes and like head to toe feeling sick, which I thought was kind of odd. And on the seventh one, I was walking, uh, I was taking a phone call to call my doula and midwife to see if I should go to the birth center. And my water broke all over our playroom and we were like, okay, this is go time. We were, I was so filled with adrenaline, I was freaking out. So I got everything, we got the car all loaded up, and my husband and I left to go to the birth center. And this is a birth center where there's, um, you can't have medication and there's no like OR or anything, it's a standalone birth center. So I got there, I started laboring, I was one centimeter and like 50% of face, which is what I was with my first son too, which is kind of funny, that's always when I go into labor. Um, and you know contractions were coming on and they would stop and then they would start and they would stop and um they offered for me to go home if i wanted but i something in my gut said stay here it's gonna get like it's gonna pick up so i stayed there and we rested throughout the night i labored my doula was so helpful my husband was super helpful and everything was going great but my labor did stall out and so the next morning around seven, we decided that, um, you know, I had lost a lot of water. My water just kept breaking and they kept saying, this is the most water we've seen. So it was kind of crazy. Um, but to start my labor back up, we did castor oil. So I took that in the morning and I was really excited because my contractions came back and they were strong and they were fast. So it was like every two minutes and they were intense. So I was using a comb to hold, to squeeze in my hand. And then the other hand I was holding my husband's hand and breathing through them. I felt really in control, but it definitely was intense. Um, and I don't want to skip over anything, but I think kind of what happened next was the emergency. So everything was going good. And then I felt like I was pushing. And so we set up the camera, we get, everything ready because I'm pushing and so there was two significant pushes and I said something's coming out and I thought for sure it was his head but when they looked they were like no that's not his head we're not sure what's happening so they went and got a different midwife and they were like I pushed again and the cord fully came out a lot of it came out so I just remember the room got very serious. They said flip over now, call 911, prep Cascade, which is a local hospital. Um, and they said flip over on all fours. I just remember hearing this will be the most painful thing you've ever felt. And at that point I was on all fours facing the other way and I had to have my baby. My midwife came in, pushed my baby up and out of my birth canal. I remember just screaming and swearing like three times because it was the most pain I've ever felt. And I'm unmedicated at this point. Um, 
And I was terrified because a cord prolapse is very rare, one in a thousand. And if you're not at a hospital, the survival rate is less than 10% at a hospital and out of a hospital, it's even smaller. So I was really nervous, but I just knew that I had to stay calm. And at first I was panicking because I'm on a mattress and I had to be in like downward dog at this point because I need to meet my butt up higher to keep the baby's head off the cord. And so I'm holding downward dog over 39 weeks pregnant on a mattress, which is not firm. So it's really hard to hold yourself up. And I just remember um, kind of starting to panic and someone whispered in my ear and they said, you need to stay calm for your baby. And that changed everything for me. I just remember I breathed calmly the entire hour of the emergency after that. I felt like every time someone asked me how I'm doing, I was like, I'm fine. Cause I just wanted my baby to be okay. And I remember they kept not being able to find his heart rate. Um, it didn't help the position that we were in was really hard. And the EMTs took about 10 minutes to get there my best friend actually was coming to the birth center at that exact moment to help me labor. So she was in the lobby, the EMTs arrive and they're like, okay, this is really complicated because I'm midwife and I have to move as one. And I just remember everyone was moving really slow and I was like, this is, we're not going to get there quick. And so they have to move me and my midwife over onto the gurney as one and we cannot move because the baby's head cannot go on the cord or he loses his oxygen. And so we get onto the gurney, I'm still in downward dog and they get us out into the ambulance. I don't even know where my husband is. I know he's, now I know he was with me, but I didn't know who was around me because my head is off the gurney. Um, I started to get a little bit lightheaded, but I just told everyone I'm fine to not have to worry about me when the baby is my concern um they get us loaded up they still are like one minute they find his heart rate then they can't find it and then the midwife feels him moving so it's like i have some confidence that he's gonna be okay but we don't know and the hospital is like probably 30 seconds down the road but we have to take like it's probably five to ten minutes to get there because they had to drive really slow so that we wouldn't move around um, once we got there, I just remember seeing everyone's shoes around me because I'm still head down and everyone was really nervous about us, um, my midwife and I, because it's really complicated when you're dealing with two people in a crazy position and you're trying to get to a crash C-section. So, um, we got into the OR still can't see anything. I remember they couldn't lock the gurney wheels and everyone was just kind of stressed, like running around looking for um, surgery supplies. And they had prepped for me, which was really helpful, but there still was stuff that, this is not a trauma hospital, so it was not set up, prepared for me as much as other places might have been. So we get there and I just remember that the surgeon walks in and she says, okay, this one makes me really nervous. And I, I was scared at that point because if the surgeon doesn't know what she's gonna do, who knows what they're gonna do. So at this point, I don't have a lot of hope. And um, I remember I forgot a part, but at the birth center, I was like, everyone pray and just having everyone pray over me and the baby brought me a lot of peace and I just remember um, in the ambulance I looked down and I saw a cross on the ground engraved and I just had these moments throughout the birth that I saw God and I saw that he was with me and I had this peace that my baby is not going to die and he has a big plan over his life and I knew that I would do my part and they were gonna all do their part and we were gonna get this baby out. So I had faith that God was going to save him, but it was a little bit scary. And my husband had looked up cord prolapse on his phone because he did not know what was going on at the birth center. 
So he was terrified when he saw the odds of baby survival. And um, with a crash C-section, your spouse can't come in, um, you're under general anesthesia, um, you're just by yourself, and you, I wasn't sure that my baby was gonna survive when I woke up. So I was just like anxious, like let's get this going, get me on the table. So when they finally flipped me over onto the table, I was no longer upside down. So then baby moved into either transverse or breach, we're not really sure what position he went in, but I know my midwife couldn't find the head anymore. And I just remember she's on one side of the drape. Um, she's like still hand in during the surgery, holding his head up and she's under a drape. And then they couldn't get my catheter in for a long time. I just remember I was so stressed out. Like this cannot be the thing that delays the surgery. And so the surgeon like took that over and they got everything all set up for me. They got my IVs in and um, probably took 20 minutes to get everything set up. And then they told me I was gonna be put under general anesthesia and it actually felt like an escape to me in that moment because I was too scared to know if my baby was going to live or not. I didn't wanna be awake for that to find out. So it brought me a lot of peace to know that I would not be awake for that. Um, they put me under general anesthesia and right before I went out, I heard them yell heart rate 150. And I was like, he's alive. But I knew like that could end at any minute. So once I got out, I did not know. Um, they put me to sleep. They started the surgery. And if you guys aren't aware with general anesthesia, within two to three minutes, they need the baby out because there's a paralytic that, hopefully I'm saying everything right, that can get through the placenta to the baby and it's really dangerous. So they didn't know that his position changed so much. So when they got me open and they got to the baby, his hand came out, which is not what they were expecting. So I just, I just know from what people have said, um, they had to do like an extension on my incision and then they had to do vacuum. They had to try to manually rotate him. Um, they had multiple people trying to get him out, but he was not coming out and they were on the clock. They didn't know he changed position. So that added this pressure that they needed to get him out. And, um, obviously I'm not seeing any of this cause I'm sleeping, but, um, they got him out finally and his APGAR scores were really low and they needed to do like oxygen and it says like a resuscitation mask was used on him to try to get him um, responding and he was totally fine after probably the first, I think it said 12 minutes, um, they got him stable and my husband was able to be with the baby and they ended up having to give me blood I'm, it's still unclear if I hemorrhaged or not because they didn't have any information on me when I came from the birth center. So it says that they had to give me blood, but I don't know if that was just precautionary because I could have been low and they wouldn't have known. So there's still some things I have no idea what happened. I just know that we are both okay. Um, and I was looking at like timestamps on pictures and stuff and it seems like three hours later is when I got to meet my baby, which is really sad because I thought I was gonna have this unmedicated low intervention birth center birth and the golden hour was so special to me and I was just so excited to have that experience and it was all taken from me. And um, I just remember waking up in a recovery room and asking over and over and over, is my baby alive? Is he alive? And the nurse or whoever was in there said yes, but I was so groggy that I don't, I just kept asking her. And I kind of thought they would be lying and trying to wait until I was with my husband to tell me the bad news. So I didn't really trust that he was okay until I got up to the room and they wheeled me up there and my best friend was there, my doula and my midwife and my husband was with the baby. So he wasn't there in that moment. But I remember they got me settled into the room Thank goodness I have pictures because that's the only way I remember this. I don't actually remember 
any of this. I'm just, I've seen pictures, so I know what happened. But um, they brought my baby in and I could see that he was alive. And it was like the best moment of my life. Because I just thought this is a total miracle from God that my baby lasted, I think it was like 55 minutes with the cord prolapse out of her center. And I held that position down, I was in a downward dog for almost an hour. And we did it, we survived. I wasn't sure if I would survive, honestly. Um, I didn't know what would happen. So I went in very nervous and the recovery room and the hospital room postpartum was where I got to hold my baby. Sorry, the postpartum room is where I got to hold my baby. And um, I'm really thankful for the pictures I have because I don't remember any of it. Um, and we, we breastfed really well, I remember that. And my midwife left a couple hours after, I would say. Same with my doula um, and my best friend. They all kind of headed out and then it was my husband, myself, and the baby. And I thought we were kind of in the clear, but the hospital was not set up to have a labor and delivery wing and I was the only one in the wing as far as I know and they just kept forgetting about me and I remember I did not get to walk until over 24 hours after my c-section and they just I had several nurses who were not attentive I remember they just would forget about me and they make they have you wear like these um cuffs on your calves after your c-section so that you don't get blood clots and for the first like six hours mine weren't even on and no one would take me seriously and I just remember they were like oh yeah there's no tubes these aren't working um they just assumed my legs were numb even though I was under general anesthesia so I didn't have any numbing and so they're like we'll go find some in the basement so they like went and found tubes and it was super strange and we just kept running into like, you could just tell it was a small hospital and they didn't have a lot of things to deal with complications. Um, my baby unfortunately had low blood sugar following a traumatic birth. So their solution was you can try to nurse, but if it doesn't get his blood sugar up, we have to do formula. And I remember I would try to put him on and like if I was not fast they would immediately be like no no no, we need to do a formula right now like he's not doing well he's at the lowest we can let him go and they weren't able to do any more interventions for blood sugar at this hospital without a NICU so we kept doing this battle for the first 24 hours of okay his blood sugar is way too low like more formula more formula and he was just throwing up everything he ate and it was so traumatic. I just remember I kept thinking, my baby and I are going to die at this hospital and no one's gonna know. We're going to die here and no one's gonna know because they were just neglecting me. One of the nurses yelled at me. <laughs> it just was crazy. I thought I would have, you know, people that saw what happened to us and that we just survived this very traumatic birth and I was just being mistreated and um, 24 hours later, they had to make the decision to take my baby to a different hospital to go to the NICU. So he got sent um, like 25 minutes away to a different hospital and I did not want him to be alone after how we were treated, so I had my husband go with him. So that meant that I would be spending, you know, at this point I hadn't even been walking yet. So this is over 24 hours. I, If I had been walking and they thought I was, you know, in a good place, I could have gone and joined him but I was not even able to get out of bed they weren't allowing me to get out of bed they just kept saying they were too busy to help me walk and so I just had to wait and I remember one of the nurses was like it comes down to you choosing between you and your baby we can either work on your baby's transfer paperwork or we can get you walking what do you want to do and I was like obviously my baby and so then they kept like saying that I was denying to walk and all this stuff. And so she was like, I will not come back in until 
your baby's paperwork is done and he's ready to transfer. And I was like, okay, that's great. So then she comes back in like 10 minutes later and she's like, are you ready to walk? And I was like, yeah, is everything good with the baby? Is all this paperwork done? And she was like, well, no. She's like, you need to pick right now between you and your baby. So then again, I was like, okay, the baby. So then she leaves and never comes back. And I was like, okay. This was like several hours later, they get ready to transfer the baby. They take the baby in a um, children's hospital ambulance over to a NICU at a bigger hospital. And they get him a feeding tube put in, they get him in this tiny, I think it's an incubator, that's what they call it. Um, they get him in all of this machines and get him all set up for transfer and they take my baby. And I remember that I had never felt in a darker place in my life than that moment. It was like, I had fought so hard to see him survive and then he's taken from me. And I just like could not understand why this was all happening to me. So I tell my husband that he needs to go and be with the baby. And so he goes and he's with the baby. My grandma thankfully is still in town. So she came to be with me and my best friend Lexi came to be with me. And, um, I remember I was refusing to pump. I just, it just all felt pointless. It all felt, I was so depressed and so traumatized and in just so much adrenaline in my body. I was like, I'm not pumping. I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to sit here and be sad. And I was so thankful that I had, um, my best friend and my grandma there to be with me. So I didn't have to be alone while my husband was with the baby. And, um, 24 hours later, um, I had been walking at that point and I had some awesome nurses step in at the end who were wanting me to be with my baby and wanting me to get to the NICU. So they got me walking. I did laps and laps and laps around the hospital. I was just making myself walk and, um, they were moving slow <laughs> to get me discharged, but I just kept asking and asking and asking and I finally got to go. Um, it's a very weird feeling to leave the hospital without your baby and your husband. And I was just wheeled out in a wheelchair and it was freezing out so we had to go. I had no clothes with me because I was only supposed to be at the birth center for 12 hours postpartum so I had nothing with me. Um, we went to, my grandma ran into Target to get me a sweater and we picked up my prescriptions and then we headed straight to the NICU and I got to see my husband and my baby. And I remember at the NICU, I was greeted with open arms from the staff there and they were so excited that Rhodes' mom was here to be with him and that I would be able to breastfeed him and hopefully get him um, to keep food down and stabilize his blood sugars. I absolutely love the NICU. They are incredible people, the best medical staff. They made a custom sign for his door and they were on top of every feeding. They never forgot about him. And we spent that day there. So that was his second day in the NICU. And then um, they said that I should go home and rest because there was no bed or anything for me. So I, against my will, I, I went home and decided to sleep at home. And that was a great choice because I got a good night's rest and I was ready to go at 4 a.m. ready to go see my baby. And um, we were able to do that because we had so many friends helping us out and watching our toddler at home. So um, at the time we didn't know this, but our toddler was very ill. So we had to keep our distance and that was really hard and it was hard to explain to him why the baby is not home with us. Um, so the next morning we go to the NICU and he has another, I think he had another full day there. Um, but we got to take him home that day, I believe. It's kind of all a blur, but we have lots of meetings with like, they had like a Zoom call meetings throughout the day with a bunch of different medical team members and they approved of him to go home. They got his feeding tube out and we finally got to go home with our baby. 
and it was really sweet that we got to leave the hospital together because I wasn't sure that we would get to do that first ride home. So we got to do that and it was actually the hospital I had my first son at. So it kind of felt like we were reliving that moment, which was um, a sweet moment out of everything. And then we came home to a very, very, very sick toddler and my husband and I realized, oh hey, we have to divide and conquer because we cannot have our baby get sick from an acute. So I took the baby for the first two weeks. My husband was with my toddler and my grandma was with me the first week. And I just remember it was so hard and so exhausting. And the medications I was on for my C-section were making me just like fall asleep without any control. And I just remember the first few weeks were so, so hard. And it felt so sad that my toddler was not able to bond with his baby brother like we had planned. Um, we let him meet his brother and then we had to keep distance because we didn't know if he had RSV or what he had. Um, so that that is my birth story. I had a cord prolapse at a birth center, crash C-section under general anesthesia, then my baby was taken from me and brought to NICU. It was a very, very dark, dark few. For the first eight weeks were really dark. And it slowly got better and better and better as we could be together as a family. And I just wanna encourage any moms out there, if you have gone through a cord prolapse, I'm so sorry that you went through that. And I just know for me, there was nothing on YouTube hardly anything on Instagram. I tried to connect with other moms. I found a few that have been become really good friends and they have just been such a support to me and an encouragement to me. And I just hope that I can be an encouragement to other moms that have gone through a cord prolapse birth and, um, or people that have gone through a, a home birth transfer, a birth center transfer. It's, it's really hard when your dream birth plans completely change. Um, I'm definitely struggling with guilt now about um, choosing to birth not at a hospital because it took so long to transfer and you know in those type of emergencies you have minutes most people I know that I found online they got their baby out within minutes and I have not found anyone that has been transferred with a cord prolapse and I would love to connect with you if you have been through that I am looking to connect with other moms hopefully not feel so alone in this birth that I had. So please comment below if you know anyone that's had a cord prolapse birth or you yourself have had one and um, want to share about your story. So thank you so much for listening.